Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Isabel. How are you? Super, thanks for asking. How are you? Awesome, thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Deb. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you. So these are the overachievers who always log in early for every meeting. I love it. Hi, Darren. Hey, how are you? How's everybody doing? Fantastic. That's good. Awesome. So everybody ready for a fun day on marketing oh yeah <laughs> i think everybody needs more caffeine that's what i think Jeez. i have it there you go they double down on it at this point So we have one more minute and then we're going to get started right on the hour, right there, Darren? Sounds good. Anybody want to share anything that they've learned along the way? Any ahas that uh, have really made a difference in their lives? There's been so many, how to pick one. First thing that comes to mind. Well, can I say something then? Since nobody's jumping at the opportunity. Sure. sure. I want to say that for me, something that really changed my professional life is when I understood that opportunities like this, like even an online class, is an opportunity to network with other agents and to make connections. And so the first thing that I always do, I see somebody else already has it. I put where I'm from and my service area next to my name. So that way people know that if they have referrals to send to Cape Cod, I'm your gal, right? And so I wanna know, Charles, I wanna know where you're from. And then I want to follow up maybe with you and uh, and maybe you know get to know each other better and become referral partners. It's a great idea. And if you don't know how to change that, there's three dots at the uh, top right hand corner of your video of your of your picture. There are three dots. So you click on them, and then you click on rename. And that is how you can change your name or add anything to your name. Say so one of the things that I've picked up from my uh, nearly three years here at KW is um, if you've never been at another brokerage, you've never been in another place, um, you almost get spoiled by the training that you get here. This is something that you won't find anywhere else. Um, trust me, in terms of being at another firm and then coming here, it's actually mind blowing how much information and how many resources are available to KW agents compared to any other place and tap into it, take advantage of it. Uh, if you can, take Ignite more than once, uh, take both, really subscribe to anything and everything that's out there. And that's really what's gonna help to make you a well-rounded agent. It's also gonna make sure that you have a long uh, career in real estate. 
Um, a lot of times, most firms, you're kind of flubbing it as you go through. And if you can last through two years, you might be able to make it. But if you don't have a guide, if you don't have a map, if you don't have anything that's there, any resources and support, chances are it's hard to succeed. That's why KW has everything here at our fingertips. You know, classes like this are really what makes a difference between making it a professional career or making it a hobby that just tends to flame out. So definitely take advantage of it as much as you can part of the KW family here. Well said, Darren. So I think it's time for us to start. It's 9.03. Okay. And I see many people are joining. So why don't we start introducing ourselves while people keep joining and then we can fully start in a few minutes. All right, that sounds good. Would you like to go first? Sure. So I'm Serena Lupicolo Smith. As you can see from my label, my name there, I'm from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And I'm actually originally from Italy, uh, where I am an investor in uh, two market centers there. And I'm a member of the ALC. I've been in business for four years uh, and I've been on the uh, ALC almost from the very first year, as soon as I got. And I'm also part of the regional ALC for New England. Uh, and I love teaching. And, uh, and so, um, and that's something that I want to tell all of you. If you get an opportunity to teach something in your market center, take it right away because that's the best way to learn something even better and to make more connections. Hi, everybody. My name is Darren. I am a productivity coach in the Connecticut area for Keller Williams Legacy Partners. I've been with Keller Williams for almost three years. And prior to that, I was at another firm, which I'm not going to name because it's not relevant. Uh, what's relevant is being here and being able to help all of you to build your real estate career and take that next step. Um, prior to that, I was actually a WWE wrestler, and I was also a professional javelin catcher. So beyond that, real estate has taken over my life, and that's really what I want to focus on going forward. So, And I was lying about those previous careers in case anybody, I'm just seeing if anybody was awake at this point. So if not, <laughs> grab some more caffeine, ready to go here, okay? <laughs> so in case you haven't noticed, we are going to be starting with marketing today, okay? Marketing, which is one of the critical elements of lead generation, all right? Basically, what happened is yesterday you learned about prospecting. Today, you're le learning about marketing, and the two of them go hand in hand, okay? These are the two essential elements to building your business. Right now, I don't know if anybody has appointments. If you do, give us a thumbs up. That's fantastic. If you don't, well, this is pretty much the cornerstone of what you're going to be doing, okay? Okay. We like to say that we are prospecting focused and marketing enhanced, and we're going to go over exactly what that means today as part of this course. But marketing is a critical element to being successful in this business. Uh, Serena has a lot of experience in the marketing side, so she's going to share as much wisdom as she has to help you to learn along the way, avoid any of the pitfalls, and really focus on the things that are going to grow your business. All right. So... What we're going to focus on today, obviously, lead generation, right? This is the uh, second half of lead generation, lead generation for buyers and sellers. And this is these are the essential elements that a successful agent focuses on. If they're going to basically build a career and build a business, something that's sub substantial and sustainable, okay, these are the critical actions that a successful realtor takes. Ask any agent in your offices, um, the successful ones that have been around for a while, how many of these things they do. And granted, they're probably going to do you can check off most of them, if not all of them, all right? So these are critical. Memorize this list. You know, ways to grow your business and ways to run your business, okay? These are essential. And marketing is a tool that really you can do pretty much on a passive basis. It's going to help you to stay in front of people, to stay top of mind, to be the real estate specialist of choice when you're out there. And it goes hand in hand, like you said, with a prospecting side of it. So really... Take in as much as you can here. We've got a lot of tools at our disposal, and we're going to show you how to tap into all of that to make sure that you are out there in front of folks. So first off, we're going to start off with the differences between marketing and prospecting. Uh, Serena, is there something that you wanted to add? Yeah, I wanted to say two quick things. So we are going to give you some breaks. So I would say we can do either a five minute break every hour or we can do a 15, 15 minute break in right like after two hours so that an hour and a half so 
we will do one or the other then I will let you uh, take the lead on that and then the second thing is you know it's hard to teach on zoom we are more used to teaching to a class where we can interact with people so i'm going to ask all of you to turn on your camera if you can and keep it on as much as possible because we feed off your energy so interact with us so show us faces smile use the reaction um the reaction little box at the bottom at the bottom bar here uh, with thumbs up or clap or smile. So that's also a way for us to, to see that you are engaged. So help us out so we can make and, and interrupt us there. And I hope that's okay with you. Ask Absolutely. us questions. I will be monitoring the chat so you can ask questions in the chat as well. But if you want to ask, uh, feel free to like raise your hand and then we will let you speak. Okay. Thumbs yeah, up. Definitely. Good. Yeah, let's make this more of a dialogue than a monologue because nobody wants to hear me talk for three hours. So let's make sure that we interact. And if you have questions, just feel free to jump right in. Okay. Excellent. So we're going to talk about the difference between marketing and prospecting. All right. Does anybody know the difference? Instead of reading just what's on the slide, anybody have a good handle on what the difference is between prospecting and marketing? Uh I'll go. Um, <clears throat> marketing is more of the image that you um, prepare or make for yourself and how you deliver that message. And prospecting is actually actively going to get the business or searching for the clients. Sure. Okay. There's definitely elements of that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. What else? Anybody have anything else? Yeah. Well, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Um, hi, my name is Christina. Um, I wanted to say um, marketing is a lot more targeted. Um, you're actually paying for that. Um, you you have you you have the marketing after prospecting, and they also go hand in hand as well. Um, and prospecting can be a lot longer, um, but the marketing is a lot more targeted after the prospect. Okay, yeah, there's some elements of that in there too. Yeah, absolutely. One of the ways that I like to describe it is prospecting is where you go one-to-one -one with somebody else. You have a real estate conversation with one other person, maybe it's two people, but whatever it is, you're having a personalized conversation. Marketing is one-to-many. And marketing, in doing that, what you're looking for is for folks to come to you. So in prospecting, we're reaching out to them. We're having a conversation. In marketing, we're reaching out to many people looking for them to contact us. And if you take a look at it, marketing, first thing that's there, money intensive, right? If we're going to do a marketing campaign, chances are we're going to be paying for something. It could be postcards that we put out. It could be a Facebook ad that we put out. All right, things like that. We could maybe buy some of those recyclable bags that everybody has, something along those lines, right? So we're putting our brand on one of these items or a way of offering something to our clients and putting it out there, okay? And might be money intensive, might not, but either way, we're putting it out there for as many people to see as possible, okay? It is passive because we are not actually out there actively talking to every single person like that. It's passive. We're just putting things out there looking for the response, looking for people to get back to us. And this generally is a long-term play, all right? If you take a look at geographic farming, where we actually go to a neighborhood or a town, we send postcards out, right? We do that once a month. And we also intersperse that with maybe walking around that neighborhood or walking around that town occasionally. But that's more of a long-term play. If you take a look at the way that we brand ourselves, it takes eight to 10 times for people to see that message before it sinks in with them. So when we're going around to a specific neighborhood and we're putting postcards out there, it's going to take a while for that to generate any sort of information back to us. All right. Um, it's similar to when you watch a commercial in the Super Bowl, right? Usually they're one and done. After you see it a day later, you can't remember what the service of the product was. But how many of us can recite the commercial word for word with that emu and the guy who in the yellow shirt and all this stuff? We know exactly what it is as soon as we know the music. 
We can recite it word for word. It's the same thing with us and our personal branding. When it comes to marketing, we want to be out there on a regular basis to solidify that message that we are their real estate specialist. Okay, but it takes a while for that to come to fruition. Take a look at prospecting. Okay, prospecting time intensive. Why is that time intensive? Prospecting is time intensive because you are going individually to a person one to one. And there's six different ways that we prospect, right? Six different ways to contact people. We have calling, we have texting, we have email, we have old school mail, like handwritten notes. There's always social media, Facebook Messenger, and things like that. And then the last one, which has kind of become, you know, passe at this point, it's face to face. We'll get we'll get back to doing that. Those are the six ways to actually reach out and prospect with folks, but it takes a lot of time. And it is proactive. We're out there and we are purposely and purposefully going after people, talking to them about how we can help them out with their real estate problem. We're solution providers. And generally, we get immediate results. I would say that first time we reach out, we may not get it, but the second time and the follow up, let's say the fortunes in the follow up, that's where we're going to see the results, right? So that's the difference between prospecting and marketing. Anybody have any questions or anything that they want to add about that? Serena, how about you? Anything you want to throw in there? No, no, I love what you're saying. I fully agree. I want to reiterate that we would love, really would love it if you could turn on your cameras, guys, uh, because, the, I mean, this is to participate. And uh, we, we always, you know, how to say, we always have different kinds of participants to a class. We have the vacationers, and then we have those that the, are here just to, you know, spend time, not really to take advantage of it. But then there are those who really take advantage of the class. And uh, um, I, it's really important to me that I can see who you are and how you engage with us. So thank you. Sorry if I keep saying that, but it's really important. It's good interaction with everybody. You know, we get the cameras on and we get the uh, conversation going. Definitely beneficial. So. What sort of questions do we have up to this point? I know we just started a lot of information right off the bat. What sort of questions do we have? Nothing. We're good. Thumbs up. All right. Perfect. Excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually do a little bit of a deep dive into marketing. All right. We're going to find out exactly what are the essential elements to marketing and what are some ways that we can actually market ourselves, our brand, our business out there. So take a look at this page right here. I think everybody has this on page four in their workbook, okay? What we do is we have examples of prospecting. We also have examples of marketing. And then we've got a blend of different resources in between there as well, okay? And so we're gonna cover some of these things. So take a look at this. And is there anybody that's currently doing any one of the, th the items that are on the list right now? Yes. <clears throat> Okay, so Chuckles, which one are you doing here? Let's see, I'm doing networking events. Um, I'm doing uh, key relationships, mm -hmm. community outreach, circle prospecting, uh, farming, networking. Well, yeah, networking was already on the other one. That's great. I've done some marketing but um, I've kind of stopped for a little while until I figure out how to do it with uh, ROI because mm -hmm. I was spending money and not getting anything in return. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Direct mail. Yep, done that. Good. What else? Anybody else doing something that's not on the list? Well, yesterday I was helping someone that is on vacation. Okay. I helped her buyer to see three houses. Good. It's just the beginning. That's good. That's good. What you're doing is you're getting the experience, you're getting the knowledge, and you're building your confidence, which is excellent. That's good. Yeah. And I'm meeting new agents, too, so it, it will be helpful for the future, too. Right. One thing that we're going to show everybody how to do is how to do marketing without spending any money. And it all involves social media. And that's one of the things that we're going to touch on and the benefits of command and the tools at our disposal. I mean, how many of us right here want to spend more money as a brand new agent, right? We've already spent enough for getting a license, taking a class, doing everything that we can to get, you know, into this position. And we don't want to spend anything more. 
So we'll be able to show you how you can actually go out there, market yourself, market yourself efficiently and get the return on that that you would get if you were to spend money. So we'll go over all of that as well. I got some really good, basically general activities that are on here as well. Um, personally, what I've seen from folks in my productivity coaching group is that they've getting a little creative in terms of things that they've done. Um, we had folks that actually uh, had friends who owned a diner and they went in and they agreed to pay for the coffees of all the folks that were in there as long as they filled out a car that said that they were looking for a free CMA. And what that did was that basically helped that agent build a database and gave them the, uh, the activities to work on their CMA skill set. Okay. We've had other folks that I've actually uh, built video libraries online of listings of other agents. And we actually have one agent in particular who somebody noticed her videos of walking through houses and actually gave her a radio spot on a morning radio show in the local area right here. And she managed to build her business being brand new off of two time slots on a radio show during the week. Okay. So things like that, ways of getting yourself out there, offering value are terrific ways of marketing yourself. So get creative. Think about things that you do. If you've got a hobby or an interest, okay? Let's say that you play tennis. Okay? If you play tennis at a local club or something like that, right? Go out there, maybe sponsor some tournaments. Maybe get some tennis balls and have your logo on there if you can. Things like that, right? Start to incorporate things that you have fun with and that you uh, have knowledge in and work that in as well. There's something that I, I don't see here, and maybe I'm wrong, but something that a lot of people are doing now is starting a podcast. So that's something, another way to do it. And it's cheap. You just need a good microphone and you can do it yourself, or you can invite experts like a lender, a financial advisor, or other professionals to have a conversation with you. And that is another easy tool, cheap tool that you can use. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anything that you can to get your message across. It's fantastic. And you know something, get out of your comfort zone. A lot of folks say, well, I don't want to do that because I'm not comfortable with it. All right, well, get comfortable with it. Try different things. You're going to figure out that there's probably about three or four different methods of lead generation, which include the prospecting and the marketing that are going to work for you and stick with those. As soon as you know what you're doing, stick with those. And that's what's going to help you to build your business. If we jump around from one shiny object to the next, okay, that's where we get into problems. Focus on three or four key activities that are going to help you to build your business. Right. Good. Any questions at all? We're good? Okay, perfect. All right, so let's take a look at some of the questions, all right? So take a look at the first one here. How do you know where the customer is and how do you meet them there? So this part is interactive. So we don't have the answers to this. We would like you to discuss like a mastermind in which each of us kind of contributes and then we share ideas. Anybody have an idea on this? How do you know where the customer is and how do you meet them there? By having conversations with various people, where, wherever you are, a church, you know, when you go to a car wash, all, all these kind of places. Yeah, you can find different people, even shopping. Absolutely, absolutely. Here's the thing too, is that when you go out there and you talk to people, all right, you're going to find the people that have the real estate problems. We're solution providers. We're real estate consultants, right? We're the folks that go out there and help to solve the problems. You know, you talk to somebody and say, yeah, well, I know somebody at work who's looking to buy a house. They don't know the first thing to do. Well, we can help with that. I have a cousin looking to sell their house. I'm not sure what steps to take. Well, we can help with that too. Have those conversations. Put yourself out there. Talk to people. Having real estate conversations are the best way to understand and unearth where those opportunities are. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sure what to do, and you know something, you don't have to always start off with real estate as the first thing that you say. Have conversations. Talk to people. Ask them what they do for work. They're going to ask you what you do for work. Right? Reciprocate. You overhear a conversation and just you know help them out. See, jump in. Have the conversation, talk to them, see if there's, if there's ways you can help them out, right? So put yourself out there. Put yourself out I there. Have a, yeah, I have a ahead. short story about this. So um, one of the agents on my team, um, we had this conversation the other day, and I was telling him that one of my best clients is somebody I met at my son's soccer game, right? And then they ended up selling four houses, buying and selling four houses with me. 
So that was like one of my best lead generation techniques was to just take my son to a soccer game and start talking and talking about real estate without selling, just having authentic conversation about people. Because as soon as somebody knows that you're a real estate agent, what are they going to ask you? What's the first question everybody asks you when they hear that you're a real estate agent? How's the market? How's the market? There you go. And so then you, of course, you, are, you need to be prepared. You need to know. You cannot just say, oh, it's hot. That's not enough. Just it's an opportunity to position yourself as the expert. And then one thing leads the other and you will end up with the client. So I was telling this story to this agent on my team. And he was like, uh, because he was complaining that he didn't have much time to regenerate because his wife was out of the country and he had to take his kids to all the sports events. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's like your greatest opportunity. So he went, literally, this is a true story, guys. He went, he came back, he called me from the field and he said, you can believe it. I have seven new clients, seven because he started talking, there was this group of parents, they all know each other, they, you know, and they knew he wasn't there to sell or to, or to prospect. He, they knew that he was just a father like everybody else. And yeah. there were literally seven people that either knew somebody who wanted to buy or sell, or they themselves were thinking of buy, selling and investing. Don't forget the investing part. And so ev- the, your customer is everywhere everywhere you look and i'm telling you i've had another great source of lead generation i love i'm italian so i love my cappuccino so i go to starbucks and the line in starbucks in like waiting there sometimes it's very long it's incredible like if you start talking to people people will talk to you and uh, chances are that one of them either buy wants to buy sell invest or know somebody who wants to do those things so that's my story. That's great. That's good. See, it could just happen pretty much anywhere. Uh, I know people that I've talked to, for them, they wear their name tags everywhere they go. I've had people that have gotten listings from just pumping gas. Somebody walks by and is like, oh, you're a real estate agent? Hey, would you mind coming by? We're thinking of selling our house. Things like that. It happens in some of the most unique circumstances. But if you're not out there and telling people that who you are, they're not going to know. You can't help them if you don't tell them, Right. One of the one of the questions that I like to give counter to, you know, how's the market is I always ask people, so that depends, are you a buyer or a seller? And then what that does is that gets them talking because the person who asks the questions controls the conversation. So as you learn how to basically put yourself out there, you learn how to get that information from folks that you can see if it's somebody that you can help now and maybe at some point in the future. Serena, you want to ask the next, next question? Next question is how do you communicate your value proposition so first of all actually what is your value proposition okay we need a volunteer somebody really brave that is able to unmute their microphone and tell us why why would i want to work with you i was going to add um you just want to add value to their situation and change their situation for the better. Um, and if it's a great situation, make it even better. Um, so come from contribution, be there to help. Yeah. But what I want to know from somebody here is why would I choose you? over your competition or the other agents which are not competitors they should be collaborators but why you i got something um uh keller williams uh largest uh, real estate agency uh i personally train five days a week every morning anywhere from a half an hour to three hours um we have the most intense training and information value. Furthermore, I have over 200 agents in uh, my uh, my brokerage that uh, I can rely on. So 
if I don't know the answer, I'm not going to make it up, but I'm going to go back and I have a wealth uh, of information and a huge team. Uh, so when you're hiring me, you're not just hiring one person, you're actually hiring 200 people. E. I love that. Uh, that's true. And that's especially important for a new agent, right? You don't have yet much to boast about. You don't have your numbers. You don't have, you know, use the might of your market center. And if not that, of the whole company, you know, we are the number one company in the world. We have all, over 190,000 agents worldwide. Do you guys know that we are in 50 countries? It, it's, it's incredible. And think about it, you know, you can put yourself in front of people and say, hey, I can even market your listing to agents in other countries. Wouldn't that be great? Something else, give me something, because this is, I think this is extremely important right there. And do you agree with me to, to oh, yeah. understand one of the first activities that a new agent should do is to learn, first of all, identify and then learn to articulate your value proposition. And it doesn't matter if you say to people, you have to know in your head, why are you better than somebody else? Because once you know, then you will gain the self-confidence that will make it so that you don't even have to say it. It will transpire. People will see you and will say, hey, I have no doubt I wanna work with you, with this person. So something else, not about the company now, about yourself. Um, I am a I master say, communicator. Sorry, who, who, who was that? Raise your hand so I can identify you and call you out because I don't know. I see Charles talked and then the other person, I didn't see who he was. Okay. So I see Lucrecia. Lucrecia, go ahead, and then Charles. Okay, I was just gonna say, and Isabel helped me with this the other day during our breakout session. Um, I would say that I have um, resources. Um, I speak Portuguese and Spanish, and I have access to a larger database or a larger community of people. Um, so yeah, I don't know, that's all I got right now. Uh, that is wonderful. So you identified one of your strengths, right? So for some people, like, I don't know if you noticed, I have a slight Italian accent. Did you notice that? That could be a weakness. At first, I was paralyzed. I didn't want to call people. I was like, oh, come on. People are going to say, you know, speak English or something like that. Somebody actually said that to me. English, please. And I'm like, I'm speaking English. Uh, but then I realized that that could be a strength because I know multiple languages and I can speak to others in other languages. So that also makes, creates a niche for me. All the Italian speaking agent, uh, clients should come to me rather than somebody else. And now other people on my team speak uh, Portuguese, Spanish and French. So that's something that is unique or, or rare and that you should definitely use. Charles. Oh, okay, um, so my value proposition is that I, <clears throat> I am a master communicator and I am different from everybody else because I noticed many agents are not. Love it. Master communicator. Communication is the most important thing in this business, right? So that really sets you apart. Isabel. Hi, um, I would say that I am bilingual speaking Spanish and English. And I also have over 20 years of social service experience, helping families um, get back. I worked with the Department of Children and Families. So I helped families with different services in order to provide a better income, um, a better situation in their home. So I would like to help you obtain your home, um, something in that regard. I love it. Keep thinking about it because that's, you are onto something. I remember that they showed us one of the bold uh, courses I took. There was this guy who used to be um, 
like a, 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 like a lieutenant, I believe, in the army. And he sent out these marketing materials, this postcard with himself in his um, uniform saying, you trusted me with your life. Now trust me with your selling your house. And that was powerful. It was a niche, of course, but that helped him translate and, and move the strength and the uniqueness about him onto his business. And it was very powerful. Anybody yeah, else before we move? Oh, go ahead. No, the only thing I would add to that is these are all great. These are terrific. Um, the way that I tell people how to picture your value proposition is if you were in a room with four other real estate agents and a homeowner came in and said, okay, I'm going to give each of you 30 seconds to tell me why I should select you to list my home. What are you going to say? Other than like, gee, I'm a really good agent, right? That doesn't do anything. It's got to be something that's unique, something that resonates, has an emotional tie. And usually it addresses some sort of pain point. But if you combine all of that together and you're able to spit that out and to say 10, 15 seconds, chances are you leave a really lasting impression. And what I would challenge everybody here to do is videotape yourself or do it on Facebook Live, one of those two things, videotape yourself with your value proposition so people can see the emotion and see what you bring to the table and then pin it to the top of your page so that when somebody is looking you up, but they've seen you out there and they want to see what you're all about, you've got a video testimonial right there from you in terms of how you're gonna be able to help them and what your value proposition is. And it's very, very powerful. I love that. And then go out and practice it, like with random people or go to a networking event. At a networking event, people expect to be talked to about your business and what you do. Practice your elevator pitch. One minute, it cannot be longer than one minute, otherwise you will lose their attention. All right, shall we move to the next question? How okay. can you, why, why don't you go? Why no, don't no, you no, go ahead, go ahead. You got it, you got it. How can you come from contribution or connect in a meaningful way? And you guys, unless you want to talk again, you can uh, uh, put your hands down. Otherwise, I'm going to call on you again. <laughs> be a genuine person and just try to have care for other people and connect with them. I mean, that's what comes to mind first. Yeah, that's great. Right. It's, good. it's absolutely true. And they always say, you know, people don't, don't care how much you know till they know how much you care, right? So you gotta, you gotta care. And it has to be authentic. It cannot be fake. Anybody yeah, else? See, any more comments? Oh, sorry. I mean, uh, you'll see when you're talking to folks that are out there, whether you know them or you don't know them, if you're not listening and if you're not genuine and authentic to uh, you know the points that you know Kirk and Serena brought up, they're going to pick up on that and they're going to know okay whether or not you're paying attention to them and really just how much you care from that one conversation. So make sure that you are genuine. Make sure that you are listening and that you're addressing their needs because. That can go a long way towards building a meaningful relationship with somebody or having end right there and not getting anything from it. That's absolutely true. Charles, do you want to talk again? Your, your hand is up. Oh, no, my hand, I'm resting my chin. I, I would have said everything that everybody else has said. Be genuine, make sure you have a value proposition and that you carry through. I think the biggest thing too, that's hard for everybody is carrying through. So if you promise something, you have to get it done. Oh, that's very important. Definitely. It, it, it is your digital end that is up and not your physical end. Oh my, I forgot to put it down. That's okay, I'm just joking. My arm's that. hurting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, um, let's move to the next one because this is very close to my heart. How important do you think branding and aesthetic consistency, consistency is in your marketing? And how do you achieve it? So first of all, what is branding? Your image. Okay. Keep going. Somebody else. Guys, we need more participation here. I think branding is when something, somebody sees it, they recognize who it's attached to. Um, they automatically think of you. Give me an example. 
Um, so I was previously a makeup artist and I have a logo um, mm -hmm. that I would think people would recognize as me because I'm, I've been doing it for like 20 years. So mm -hmm. I transferred that logo to my real estate logo so that that would be my brand, you know, that is attached to me and nobody else. I don't know. Well, and that what, yeah, very. And what you said is important. It's attached to you and nobody else. So it's not really the business. It's you. You are the business. You are your brand. That's extremely important. Like, for example, do you guys know that that logo that has the little swish like this? <laughs> that goes down and then up. What does bring to mind? Nike. Nike, you see? The moment you see that, that symbol, it's just a symbol, right? Anybody could have it, but has those colors, for example, and always the same ratio between the, the part going down and the part going up, immediately is ingrained in your brain that that's Nike. You don't have to read anything, no elevator pitch nothing else you know that that's nike and the same is true with so many others like starbucks the mermaid right green and white and so branding is not just the logo it's also the colors that you choose so and uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna say something since and and then we'll go ahead with the with the mastermind but i got i want to say that the pick two or three colors sometimes i see like a of pages and posts that have too many colors and there's no consistency. Pick two or three and then use those across all your online presence, all your social media, website, Google My Business, Yelp, everywhere you are, you have to be consistent. So how important do you think that aesthetic consistency and branding is in your business and why? Um, I would argue that um, it is highly important because um, we're also in a time where people are like just very quick to look at something. So you want to have that automatic first look and say that's who that person is or that's who that business is and I'm going to buy from them or if it's not visually appealing, it's going to be um, something you just pass by instant recognition that's what you want right and the think other about, reason go ahead no as you say think about this one of the things that sets keller williams apart from everyone else is that our agents have their own listing signs right mm -hmm. so our agents are able to put their own logo their own brand their own numbers email whatever it is on there their picture whatever it is and if people associate that with you putting out the social media posts with the postcards that they receive in their neighborhood, okay? Driving by that. When it comes time for neighbors to list their house, what are they going to remember? They're going to remember that image, that likeness, that logo, that picture, whatever it is, okay? When people drive by and they want to connect with somebody, they're connecting with a person on that sign to get more information about that listing, right? You're listing your leads. You look at any other sign that's out there from any other firm, it's a generic office sign with a generic number and maybe the agent gets a writer underneath but for us we're able to have our own brand we're able to have our own connection with the folks that are out there and that sets us apart from everyone else that's absolutely true and uh, how do you achieve this so what can you do to make this happen to make to make it so that people see your logo for example or I think about you immediately. Social media. Okay, so what do you do? What, what do you need to do for that to happen? Um, if you're posting something on Facebook or Instagram, even if it's something from Keller Williams, put your own logo on it. Right. So you're saying posting consistently? Right, yeah consistently and keeping what you're using consistent with colors or general feel of it. Okay, let's talk about the general feel a little bit more because that's very important in marketing. How do you achieve that general feel? 
Thomas, it looks like you want to talk. Thomas right, McGee. Well, what was the question again? How do you achieve um, this uh, branding consistency and uh, be recognized when they see something that you post on social media? Um, well, for social media, when it comes to that, you could always have, like, say you're posting just generally like pictures, say you're like coming to an open house or a listing in general, always have like a logo or something on in a corner or something with your colors and splash. That way they know that it's your company, at least, or your team or whoever it is. And they always associate it with you. Uh, I don't know, advertising through emails. Uh, stuff like that. Just always having a runner or something, rider, I guess, on your signs, just constantly putting your image or out there, you know? So what I, what I did when I, I started my team, I was like, I really want to be different. I really want to be unique. So I was like, so how do I do it? So I picked the colors and black and white because we do mostly luxury. So black and white were mm -hmm. what I want to be represented at. Then we picked two fonts. The font is also important. You should have one for capital letters, one for lowercase letters, and then be consistent. I'm talking about mostly in website. That's the only place. And then when you do videos and you put graphics on and text on, always use the same font. That's also important. And then the other thing that I did, I don't know if you see in my, in my background, the sign on the wall, I decided to make my signs round. You don't see round signs anywhere. They're all square or rectangular, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how about I become the one agent in town that has the round, the round signs? And so, and then since then we decided that the logo will be round. I mean, everything we have this round, with the little white around it, which is almost like an eclipse, like a, a lunar eclipse. And we decide that's gonna be our branding. That's what, and when people, and now all we picked in designs, and we'll show you how to do that. Uh, there's so many possible templates. We pick two and we are sticking to them. All the things that we put, just sold, just listed, always has that one design. Because I want that when, when people see that specific design, they don't even have to read the name of the company. They, and they see that that design with the round uh, logo at the bottom, they will immediately know that's us. I think also having a catchy slogan sometimes helps because it sticks to their mind, you know, that, that corny little slogan. Uh, for instance, one of our agents uh, put something on her plates and uh, we, we keep joking with her and saying, hey, your plates say pish. And, uh, and I'm like, well, you know, when people read that, that sticks with them because they're, because they're constantly thinking, what does that mean? So it's little slogans also help, I guess. That is very clever. Does anybody have already a slogan or a tagline? I do. What is it? And love your home. Simple. I'm a pretty simple person. So I, it was easy for me. And I, my favorite quote is there's no place like home. So mm -hmm. I just, I don't know, kind of rang true to me. Perfect. And, and you talk, touch upon something else, which is authenticity. You have to be authentic. It has to be something that is you. Yeah, I like the idea. It looks like it's unique. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Stacey, Anybody else? Stacy, did you say that you, uh, you had one too? Yes, I use dedication that will move you. I think you're breaking up a little there. Yeah, I didn't hear you. Tell you what, you know what, if you can, type it in the I chat box. Dedication that, um, dedication that I'm using my phone. I uh, don't okay. know how. Sorry, never mind. <laughs> That's okay. Type Go it ahead. in the chat if you can. We will address it in the chat. And I see Isabel has her hand raised. 
Yes, um, I would say family first, since I, I am a social worker. Your family comes first when it comes to looking for a home. Wonderful, well, perfect. Mine is, we promise a luxury experience at every price point because we want to brand ourselves as luxury, but we don't want to turn away the lower price points. We want to help everybody. So we came up and the way I came up with that, I had this networking group, we had lunch together and I asked for help. I said, this is, you know who I am, help me come up with a tagline that reflects who my company, what my company is like. And they all helped me. So you don't have to do it alone. You can ask other people to help you do it. Yeah, Stacia actually typed in the chat box, a uh, dedication that will move you. I love that. That's very good. Excellent. Okay. One of the things that you might want to consider when, you know, maybe it's homework to do after this class is start to figure out what you want your real estate identity to be. So think about what you want to be a year, three years, five years from now, and how you want people to perceive you. Because what that's going to do is that's going to help you to round out how you're going to approach people. It's going to round out what your niche is going to be, the type of ideal client that you're looking for. And when you actually live up to that marketing, you're going to get closer and closer to that identity. So think about who it is that you want to be, how people want to perceive you three, five years from now. Okay. Maybe you model that after an agent that you know in your office. Maybe there's a high producing agent. You say like, that's what I want to be. Right. Or maybe you have in your mind what your business is going to look like and how you're going to be out there as a specialist in your area. And then start acting like that in the situation. Say like, okay, if I were that agent and I'd gotten to that point, what would I do in this situation? How would I present myself? How would I market myself, right? Become that image that you want to be and become that identity that you want to be known for. Can I just say something quickly? Sure. So it's funny that we're touching on this because yesterday, right after class, I was just, I don't know, I was in this uh, headspace where I was like, how do I present? I know what I try to do. I know how I try to present, but it's one thing to know what you're, what you're aiming to achieve. And it's another to understand someone else's experience of you. Like you never experience yourself, even when you do it in the mirror or whatever else. It's an, it's an energy transfer too. Um, so I called a friend of mine that is fairly new that I met through my micro business that I have. And I just presented the question like, hey, would you be willing to just keep it very candid and tell me your thoughts of me when you first met me in my already professional setting, how I presented and whatever else, because I wanted to know how I made her feel. I felt like it was really important for me to understand um, how I made her feel so that I could tweak that um, when I start interacting with real estate clients because the industries are different, but the idea of it is the same. It's all about the experience and customer service coming from, you know, a business perspective and you being your business. And so what I heard was it was really, really great to hear um, because a lot of what I had attempted to you know, put out there came out that way. And, and so sometimes I guess, I, I, you know, you just need to hear it and it's really good to go out there and, and get that, you know, information that that's already out there for you. You don't have to create it. You can tweak it right now as it is, even if you don't have a business as a person, you know, cause I, I feel very strongly about uh, people will always remember the way that you made them feel always. Um, so it was, it was a really great experience for me. If anyone else can, can feel that I just wanted to contribute and, and, and say that it, it worked and it helped. And I have a list of how I want to now move forward. Uh, you know, with the, with the way that I treat my clients, the experience that they're getting, uh, how I present, how I want to present and, and whatever else. So yeah, just the awareness of it. Yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, if you're ever looking for feedback on perception of who you or strengths and characteristics of yourself, whatever it is about you, ask friends and family. 
people maybe that you know you know people that maybe you just met all of that getting feedback like that will help you to understand currently how you're perceived and how you can position yourself if you're looking to change so that's a great way to un, you know understand yourself how you come across just ask for feedback you may be surprised at what you hear back from the friends and family the people that you know so that's good that's really good and the other thing that is important about what Rebecca said is people remember how you made them feel. They will forget the words, but they will not forget how you made them feel. So that's another important thing. Okay. Definitely. Last question. How do or should you follow up with the leads generated from your marketing? Isn't that the most important question that we all, no matter where we are, at what stage we are, right? Also, new agents, solo agents, team. That's always the most important question. Quickly. Quickly. How quickly? Mm -hmm. As fast as you can. So, speed to lead. Uh, mm -hmm. Speed to lead. Make sure they're um, tagged in, if you're putting them in command, make sure that you're tracking what leads you're getting from what marketing so you know what's working so tag them put them on a smart plan excellent so speed to lead there are uh, there's actually research that shows that the highest um um the highest uh, the more chances you have to convert a lead uh if you call them within five minutes so when you get a lead, if you call them within five minutes, chances are that they're going to pick up the phone because they are probably still looking at the computer page or at the phone page where they um, saw the listing and, and left you their information. So speed to lead is important. And then, yes, tag them to always know where they come from. And there's actually some, um, there's a marketing strategy um, at the high level though, where they test the A and B campaigns. So it's the same campaign with some differences and then they try to see which one works better. So for those in marketing, uh, like Cynthia, maybe they know that that's something that is often done, uh, but definitely put them on a campaign and we'll, we'll talk about campaigns later on. I'd also say to add them, add them to a smart plan, right? Put them on a smart plan that's going to tell you when to follow up with them again and do it on a regular basis. All right, everybody has their own schedule of when to follow up. But what happens is, is that most agents will drop off after maybe the third or fourth attempt. But those agents that stick with it, okay, and have them on a plan where they know that you're serious and that you like to help them out because you're following up them on a regular basis. Those are the agents that tend to convert those leads that may take a little while to get there, right? And if you really want an aggressive way to keep in touch and to follow up with folks, um, Ben Kinney is actually a team leader in the Northwest region. And he, is a, he has a great team uh, across multiple states with Keller Williams. He actually has a uh, presentation out there called the 10 Days of Pain. And this is what he requires of all the folks that are on his team. And if you want to see something that's very aggressive in terms of getting in touch with people, you know, just look at that as the extreme. But there are things that you can take away from that. So if you Google Ben Kinney's 10 days of pain, you'll be able to find that and you'll see what goes through that side of it. So don't worry about, you know, thinking like, well, I'm bothering people. Well, they put themselves out there. OK, and it's up to you to see what it is that they're looking for and to get that information from them, have that conversation and see if it's something where you can help them. Right. So don't be afraid to follow up and follow up consistently. That is the big thing. And uh, don't be afraid of using other people's plans. So we, there's two things. There's a group, um, Command Your Conversion by Nick Baldwin, that has a ton of useful, you should all join it, that has a ton of useful information. And then uh, the banking. So we, we created our own uh, smart plan first. And we had like, eh, conversion rates weren't that good. Then we used the one that Nick Baldwin suggested and incorporated also the 10 days of pain by Ben Kinney. And our conversion rate went up by 7%. So now we are actually getting clients from our lead 
And we at first said, oh, these leads are bad leads. They don't work. No, it was us. We didn't know how to convert them. So that's uh, there's all the marketing that you do. It's worth nothing unless you know how to convert the leads. And this is a long-term game. It takes, they say, up to nine months to convert some of these leads. So do not give up. That's another thing that I learned recently is that it takes nine attempts before somebody interacts with you. I mean, you're lucky you have the one that, is, that answers the phone after the first or the second. But some people, you need to text them, email them, and call them nine times before you get even a yes or a, who are you. So do not give up. There you go. Excellent. Okay. So what we'd like to do is actually take a little bit of a break right now. Um, uh, Serena, how long did you want to take a break for? Let's do 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Okay. All right. Yeah. So we'll come and back. Then maybe at... we take a five-minute break later, like yep. in an hour okay. or so. Yep. So we'll take a 15-minute break. So we'll be back here at quarter after, and we'll pick up the next part. We're actually going to go into command and show you how to use designs and then campaigns as well. Everybody so good? I recommend that you mute your microphone and you turn off the camera. And it's 10 o'clock, so we'll see you back at 10.15. Hello. Hello, we're taking a break. We're going to be back at 10 15. Are you there? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.
three more minutes. We're gonna start again in three more minutes. Hi, I have a question before we start it. Sure. So I want to start doing like publicity on my Facebook page so they know just in case they forgot. But I'm always concerned what should I do because I don't have any leads, you know. Well, here's the thing. What, <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to create a business page so that it highlights your role as a real estate specialist. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to create different items and designs that you can post on the business page. Now, when that's done, share that with your personal page. So post on your business page, share to your personal page. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna broaden your audience. Um, I always like to say too, that ask those that know you that are connected to you on Facebook, ask them to share it with their friends. So now you can compound the amount of, you know, uh, people who are seeing the social posts that you have out there. And if you do it often enough, you're gonna see a lot of things get traction. You're gonna see a lot of people start to like things because everything that we have within designs, okay, is there to come from contribution. We're offering things. We're never asking or taking things from folks. We're offering things up. People aren't gonna see everything we have, but they're gonna see enough of it to really solidify that relationship between you and being a real estate specialist. Thank you. I have the business page. I just didn't invite. I just told them my person for them to like my page, but I didn't invite him. So I don't know if I should still invite him, you know, sure. because I don't Absolutely. have nothing to show them. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We're going to go over different things that you can post out there. So that's going to help you to gain that traction, to build that following. And Thank in you. general, in general, Lourdes, the, the, uh, the Facebook algorithm is starting to push against the uh, business pages. So the business page is more like this bucket in which you put your content, but then the real traction will be done through sharing it to your personal page. And like uh, Darren said, asking your friends to do the same and family to do the same, and then also ask them to comment. So seven words, the algorithm picks up, if they comment with seven or more words, that post will be put in the news feed of more and more people. So these are little tricks that you can use. But the most important thing, and so since we, we just jumped back on it, the most important thing that you can do is work on adding 10 people every day 
to your personal page until you reach 5,000 people. Thank you for the that's, tips. That's more important than, and then regarding the, the Facebook page, yes, you definitely need to have a Facebook professional page that has the logo and that has the logo of your market center. Everything that you put there has to have the logo of your market center. Otherwise you will be, you, you can be fined. And uh, start putting content on it. So start creating posts. We'll show you how, share from other. There's a lot of really interesting places where you can find nice real estate related posts and create like at least, I wanna say 20 posts or 30 posts and then start inviting people. So when they come in, they don't see one or two posts. They already see now. So they scroll, they scroll, and then they stop scrolling because nobody scrolls more than two or three times to go down the post. So you're all set. It's good information. All right. Are we ready so, to start? Yeah, let's get going. Sure, absolutely. So I'm, um, let me, actually, Darren, do you mind sharing the slides for now? Okay. And, and then when we get to show the actual command, I'll take over the screen. Absolutely, sure. Okay, so what we're going to do at this point is we're actually going to go into command and we're going to show you what it's like to tap into the design feature within command that has hundreds of templates already preset for us. We have to just have to go and make a couple of modifications and we can post this and we can actually create a schedule going out a month or two or three months of multiple posts if we want to do that as well too. So Serena is going to actually walk us through creating that. So what we have right here is we're going to be going through what you're going to see right here is command. We're going to be talking about the different types of templates that are in there, um, the dashboard where you can go in, modify what's there, even create your own from scratch. You can even upload a PDF if you'd like. You can go in there and just basically mimic something that's already set in there. And then once you create it, it's going to be yours. It's going to be saved and you can actually go in and use it multiple times or make slight changes to it and use it over and over again. Uh, great thing about this is it gives you a plethora of different options, a plethora of different templates to use. So you really don't run out of um, anything that's valuable for your clients. And it's great because even some of the templates that are in there, they're not one and done. You can use them over and over again because if we're providing information and we're being a resource, we're going to continually provide that value to our clients over and over again. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go into command. I'm gonna show you quickly what to do and how to do it, but I'm posting uh, some additional help. No, no, go, if you can go back and share that because first we have to show them the pieces that are already here and have yeah. like a critique on them, exactly. All right, and so. and then you. we'll go to the practical demonstration. What I shared here, so whatever knowledge we give you today, of course, it's not going to be enough. So this is just to whet your appetite and let you know that there's stuff there that you can do. So here in the chat, there's a bunch of additional help, articles and resources. And then, of course, for everything else, go to answer.kw.com. And in command, there's also always the, the question mark where you can find it tutorials and videos and explanation. It's actually very well done. And if you email uh, or chat with support, they will always help you. And then I believe everybody in their market center has a technology person that can help you and guide you through how to use design, how to use campaigns, et cetera. So, but let's start by looking at this, this uh, marketing piece. So um, what do you think is the purpose of this marketing piece? To invite people to uh, open house. There you go, absolutely. And uh, who do you think is the intended audience for this? Uh, 
Buyers. buyers. <laughs> Mostly buyers, right? And where do you think they are going to put this marketing piece to, to promote it, to, to put it out there? Facebook, social media, stuff like that. Okay. Do you think they can put it on Instagram? Yes. Anybody else? No. I've, Why? I know there's some, like rule about what you can post on your personal page on Instagram, I think. But on I Instagram, think... you can have a personal and a business profile. If so... it's a profile, you can, I think. Well, you can also on your private one, but the format. That's what I was going to say. Like the picture format is too wide. Exactly. It's square. So uh, it won't let you post this or you will have to crop it. And how do you crop it? See, if you have the logo over here on the right bottom right hand corner and then you're invited with the information on the opposite corner, you cannot crop it. So that's the first important thing to, to know is that there's different formats and different designs per social media platform that you wanna use. This could also make a nice postcard, right? To mail out, a lot of people still do that. This, this format will work for that. Uh, so another question is, what do you think that qualifies as a successful marketing piece? Meaning what elements, what characteristics should include? And how will you know if you are successful? I so would say, you... some... oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I would say um, make sure you include everything that maybe people would question. Um, like make sure the address is there, um, it, you know, time, everything, because I know that sometimes things have been forgotten and you just end up answering so many questions. So it's just to make sure that you have all the information on there. Okay, so that is excellent. There are different school of thoughts, though, of thought though, because uh, this is, of course, the object of a piece of marketing like this is to attract buyers and to invite people to an open house. But in truth, what is always the main reason why we put some marketing out there? To have something co somebody contact you. That actually makes sense. <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> To get leads and so how do you get leads you, you put this on facebook and then what happens people comment and do likes maybe we'll share okay yes absolutely but there is an even better way and through command it's very easy to achieve which is to create what we call a funnel, a marketing funnel. So, and I'll show you in a minute. You create a campaign, those are very inexpensive. I usually do $100 and I run it for like a four days. So the way I plan, plan the open house is I put it on uh, at the MLS on Tuesday and I start marketing, marketing it on Tuesday. And so I have at least five days of paid marketing and I budget $100 for it. And then the, um, the system creates a, a form. So anybody who clicks on the ad to get more pictures, because of course, this is not enough, right? This is not enough for me to want to go to this open house. I wanna see more pictures. I wanna see if the house uh, you know, has the, the features that, I'm, that I need, that I want. And so they will click on it. And then in order to see the pictures and to be redirected to the so-called landing page, they will need to give you their phone num name, phone number, and email address. So in the end, keep this in mind, because again, I learned this recently. At first I was like, oh yeah, let's put it on Facebook. Everybody can come and they will PM me. Some people will private message you, but, uh, if you really want to capture leads and then nurture them, put them on a campaign, call them and convert them into clients, then you have to run a campaign and have a lead capture form. They will take them to a landing page. So 
that's the first thing. Um, another question is, so what do you think you will want to keep in mind when creating a marketing piece? What are the, the most important things that should always be on a, in a marketing piece? And Darren, feel free to interrupt me if you want to add some stuff. I would think you would definitely need your contact, maybe even more clearly marked. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So let's start asking, what is that must be there? Otherwise you can get in trouble. Your brokerage. Yeah. Your broker, your lo the brokerage's logo, DBA, doing business as, it has to be there. It has to be, it has to be larger than your name too, right? Yeah, well, it could be it could be the same. I actually we we do the same. It doesn't necessarily have has to be larger, but has to be evident. You have to be able to see it. So in this case, PW Partners, Keller Williams Realty, it's on the left side. And most people do do this. They put the the DBA or the market center on one side, and then their own logo on the right side. And then, guys, don't forget. That this is the graphic, right? There will be a post going with it. So you have the opportunity to write more stuff on the post. Yeah, on, check with your broker too. If um, you're not sure what the elements are that go into an ad, check with your broker because every state is different. You know, what may work in Mass may not work in New Hampshire or Maine. You know, every state is different. So make sure if you're going there the first time to put together something, check with your broker on what the requirements are. Excellent, excellent point. So um, let me let me take the screen, and I will show you. And I would like actually for all of you to log in your command, and maybe you can split the screen, keep our screen on half, and then you do on the other half. Or if you have two screens, it's even better. So you can do whatever we do hands on, because I'm gonna go fast. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna um, spend too much time showing each step. So it's important. It's important that you guys can follow and, uh, and, and try yourself. So when you go onto command, you click on design right here. And uh, there will be this that says complete marketing profile. So that is something you always want to do. And you click and then you follow the prompts. I'm not going to go into this. And then you can either import a design. That's something that we often do because we like, we design some stuff with Canva. Do you guys know Canva? It's a, it's a very yeah. easy, yeah. It's, it's something that there's a free option and then there's the paid option that has a lot of uh, uh, stock, um, marketing materials and designs. So I, it's, it's 300, about $360 a year. And I decided to, to do it, uh, to, to pay for it, because I like to be able to use the stock photos when I need them. Because that's another important thing to know when you talk about marketing, you cannot grab a photo from the internet and use it. There's, you have to use royalty-free photos Otherwise, you, you can get in trouble. And that it's in any state, not just uh, in Massachusetts. So but then you, you can pay for the photo. Or you can pay for the photo or you can give credits. Sometimes just giving credits uh, to the author of the photo is fine. But some of many photos are protected by, by royalty, by, by copyright. So you are not supposed to use them unless you have a license. Yeah, Jennifer, go ahead. Sorry, I'm getting used to these reaction things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me see if I can turn that off now. Um, so like you mentioned Canva. Um, so say we wanted to create a design outside of command, um, like in Canva or another design application. Um, is there a way that we can access the KW logo um, source yeah. file or anything? Yes, that's why you create your marketing profile and you put oh. all your logos, all your things in there. And then you can also, you'll see, you can also upload some more photos and things right here. In truth, 
command design kind of mimics mm -hmm. Canva. So most of the things are very, very similar. So oh, okay. um, yeah, so you, you don't really need to use Canva unless you want additional photos. And, and honestly, I have a marketing person now, a virtual assistant mm -hmm. that does my marketing is, is used to Canva. So I said, okay, use whatever you want, but command is free. So why would mm -hmm. you pay for something if you can have it for free? But, so um, you, mm -hmm, oh, sorry, I just had another. Um, so say like you want to make a promotional product with the KW logo, is there a way to download the KW logo for that from command or elsewhere? Yes, so there's, a, there's a in um, con command, in connect, you will find the branding guide. With oh, the, branding guide. The, you can have access to all the logos. Oh. But then again, you need your market center logo. So I would right. just ask your market oh, okay. center tech person oh. that should be able to provide it. Darren, is that the same in your market center? Okay. Yeah, every market center will have a tech trainer that may have it, or maybe there's somebody in charge of the materials. Um, we actually oh. have our own internal website that has all the resources on there. So there's something there oh. that you can tap into within your own market center that will give you mm -hmm. their specific logo in different formats as well, depending on what you're oh, looking perfect. for. Perfect. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you for bringing it up because that's something that I noticed new, newer agents or agents that have experience with other uh, companies don't do enough. Use your market center's resources. Darren here is a productivity coach. He's a source of knowledge and all his, the people that are in his program can go to him and ask, where can I find this? How can I do that? And there's always uh, your market center administrator, there's, there's classes, there's training. So don't hesitate to ask because everything that you need is already there. And it's honestly super easy to access. Absolutely. So you can create a design depending on what you want to do, your email, print. You can also create videos and social. And you can also import the photo and the text from a listing. We're not going to do it today, but know that you have the option. And of course, one of the links that I shared there, you will find all these step by step. So it will be extremely easy for you to learn how to do it. So here you see how it says social square, that's the Instagram format. So you can, and through the Facebook content creator, that's a new Trebo Studio content creator, that's a new tool that ju they just added, or just the Facebook scheduler uh, from your business page, you can schedule a post and post it at the same time to Facebook and Instagram, because now Instagram is owned by Facebook. So in that case, the design has to be square and there cannot be any links because you cannot share links on Instagram, but only on Facebook. As you can see here, you have a lot of already pre-made um, marketing materials. And look at this, for listings, for buyers, lead generation, look how many, business basic. And if you are an earning member of KW Luxury, and to be an earning, you have to have sold the four luxury listings in the last two years above the threshold that your market center will tell you, it changes in each county. Then you have access to additional items like these ones with the luxury branding. So they're slightly different, but to tell you the truth, I am an earning member, but I don't use this because there's here, the one that I like the best is like, look at this. this there's some, of, some of them are great. And you can do social white, this is for Facebook or, or LinkedIn. LinkedIn will take this one too, or Social Square. And then, of course, you have the stories. This is the format for the stories. So what, what we did, we decided to, we chose a, a couple of templates. And I like this one, this one, or this one or this one. So pick one, pick one that kind of reflects who you are and your brand. And then you can click use and edit it. Am I going too fast here? Are you guys following? Do you have questions? 
Okay. So you see here, if you click on it, you can change everything. You can change the font, the pictures. You can upload a picture here and uh, images. You can upload it here. You can add it. You see from Google Drive, from Dropbox, you can drag and drop from your, from your desktop. And then you get the picture, you drop it here, and it will replace the picture that is already present. Now, in this case, I have two, so it doesn't look that good. So you see, there's an image placeholder, and then you just drag the picture, and it takes the format the way it should be. And then here, you can change the colors if you want. You see up here? You decide which color you want. And you can change add the logos and the DBA logo here. So I uploaded my DBA and my Inspire logo. And I have there's other from Keller Williams. And always make sure to upload the one that is black on white and the white on black, depending. Because if you want to put something up here, you need the one with the white because the black wouldn't uh, wouldn't contrast enough. But I want to show you something else. After you do all that, you select your your designs that you like. Look at look at this. If you click on my designs, you have your own library, and I re I recommend that you do that. Um, because that way you don't have to every time go and look and search and, and, and waste time. You can import your PDF files here. You can start from blank or you can use one of the templates that will take you back to the page where we were. And so look at this. So what we have, we would have something like this here and we can edit it or we can duplicate it. So what we do, we will duplicate it and then edit the duplicate. And then you change all the details, all the things. And um, there is something else that I, that I wanted to um, mention. that here you see then this, there are links to share, to download, or you just click done. Oh, here. So if, if you search for a KW listing, and it could be any, one, one, two, three, Main Street. Let me see, Main Street. So let's pretend this one, then you select it. And it could be either your listing or you know somebody else's because you can also market other people's listings as long as you have permission and as long as you specify that they are not your listing so some people especially new agents ask or they often ask me can i market one of your listings uh, so i can get some leads and i have no problems because it's free marketing for me so is that it, it's totally um it's welcome so do you see how all the pictures there are in kwls show up so you need to add a different picture. You just drop it here. You see how it's already sized properly? So it makes it very, very easy. Any questions about this before I move to the campaigns? I have one. So I imagine if you ask your, uh, the agent from your market center the, to do the sharing from the, the listing, how I'll share that in my Facebook uh, so the uh, my friends and family knows that is not my list and how I'll say I don't say anything and just share. So, so well, the way I do it, I usually share it directly, either directly from the MLS or um, I make sure they say listing courtesy right. of. And I, I and sometimes I even tag the other agent to see, um, um, does anybody want to see or, or buy or come to the open house for, for this listing listed by my friend or my colleague or whatever? 
just make sure you give the, the necessary credit to the other agent. Darren, do you want to add something to that? Yeah, I always encourage new agents to reach out to agents um, who have a listing in maybe the town that they want to be in or in a neighborhood they want to be in and just ask permission to uh, to post. And again, tagging those agents as well in there is good. It, you know, all you're doing is you're highlighting the property. There's nothing in there that says that you need to indicate that it's not yours or anything like that. You're highlighting the property on behalf of the other agent. So I wouldn't worry and about remember, all the listings belong to your broker. They don't right. belong to you or to the other agent. So right. if, you know, in that case, there's no, no violation. Right. So, and this is, and then you would either share it. You see, you can share it directly. And uh, you, before being able to do this, you have to connect your social media to your command. So you go into um, the initial page and, and uh, there's a, there's a place that says connect um, apps and you can connect the social media or you can download it. And look at this, this is important. You see how it says PDF for printing? You have to change because you are not printing. So in this case, if you want a high quality image, PNG is always the best, but it takes a lot of space. So sometimes people prefer to download a JPEG especially if they don't have much memory on their computer. But I usually do PNG, I do high. Sometimes I do it depending what I download with a transparent background, depending where I need to go and put it. And then you of course select the page and you download it. So this, it couldn't be any easier. So I would like, should we, should we give them like five minutes to try it or? Just go ahead and and do the campaigns. There. Before we go on, before we go on, can you tell me where you're at? Did you go in command? Here. Yes. Yes. So this is what I did. Command first. Then you see all the little icons here. Yes. Design. You see. So if you click on design, it takes you here to this page. And right. then you can either import or create. When you create a design, you choose what the reason, what, what the output you want is. So in this case, I'm, I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you the video part because this is actually really cool. So I'm gonna do Falmouth. Let me see. Palmas, Palmas Heights. Yeah, this is one of the neighbors in my town. Then you enter the information. You can change the name. This, this is automatic. You can change whatever. If you know that home prices are on the rise, average price per square foot is on the rise. Average days on the market right now is seven number of homes for sale of course you look it up it's five and then you decide what the top features are so it could be beaches so instead of this you write beach that doesn't let you do it but let's say it's historic you put it here and then you put your information and of course the market center, the logo, et cetera, you can adjust it, but it should be like that. And then you say, go. And in a few seconds, it will generate this video, which is super easy. I mean, literally took us what, 35 seconds. And then you can share it. Look how cute. <laughs> Okay, and this is a million video with all these graphics and you, you don't have to do anything. It just does it automatically for you. So that's another tool that design offers. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, this is Danielle. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, 
are there written instructions somewhere? Uh, just because I'm going through command and I know you've shown it a couple times, but um, you know, like I've gotten into, um, you know, a piece where I wanted to go in and edit it. So, you know, like I see images and, and text and stuff. So is, yes, are there I, instructions somewhere? I share some links on the chat in the chat before okay. starting. So if you go in the chat, there's a bunch of links. And then here you see the question mark. Uh, let's see. Top, top right hand corner, you have guided tours. Oh, perfect. Okay, you great. Helen Williams University where there's videos and explanation very detailed for every single thing. You can chat with support, but that's more to, you know, troubleshoot. And then look at this. This is, uh, Darren, do you know if they still do this? The post an idea? Because I know we're, we're not doing labs anymore. Um, that's a good question. I'm actually not sure about that. But, Let's find uh, out. Yeah. So post an idea. This is something. Yes. Look at this. You can add new ideas and you, or, or upvote one of these. Like here, they would like to see the capability of create video and designs similar to BombBomb. BombBomb is this, um, this um, platform that allows you to send uh, video emails. So the email will have your video ready playing inside the email. It's, it's a great tool that a lot of people use. Look, 1,300 people want, to, want this done. I can assure you that soon we're going to see this uh, capability in BombBomb in uh, design. And uh, I actually submitted two or three things and they reached out to me and uh, two of them, they actually made them uh, like apply them. And it's incredible to see like they even listen to, to you guys with, with your suggestion. It, guys, I mean, I don't know, it, this is, it's an incredible company. I don't know if you, I imagine many of you are new, but no other company does that. All right, now quickly, let's go to campaigns. So we are again. We, we might have had a couple of questions here too. I, I think Cynthia and Sean, did you both have questions? So oh, I did have I one. Oh, Thank no, you. I'm sorry. I have a quick question. So I wanted to create like a little flyer and not. Um, so I didn't know if there was a template that could be used for like door knocking. I mean, obviously it wouldn't say door knocking, but you know, like something that's not open house or is there something that people use that's kind of like a general introduction of agents type of stuff? Mm -hmm. So when you go here, create design, print, and then you just look at all the templates. So you, you see? Okay, so or, you can really you can really do it for anything. It doesn't have to be anything. what they're mm -hmm. saying. You can just yeah. customize it. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you or in this case, with, uh, yeah, and you can even start off with a blank template and pull in bits and pieces of information to really customize what it is that you want to do. So you can take an existing template and make it your own, or you can just start off with a blank sheet and really go in and, and create what you want to see. These are examples for door hangers. So they already give you, or you want a flyer. Here's some example for, of flyers that you just can customize, adding your own stuff and your own numbers, or you want to drop off postcards or, or mail them. Here they are. So you just have to explore each of them one by one. It's a lot. There's, there's a lot of material. So but it's all here. I'm, I'm sorry. How did you find those those door templates? I don't I don't see those. How do you find them? So I went into um, so let me start again from the beginning. So I enter into command and then I click designs, the one with the little brush. And then I say, create design. And in this case, I click print and I say continue. And it takes me to a different page where all the designs are. And so you have postcards, all type of posts. And then you see here, 
how you have these little menus, drop down menus. Yes. yes. So what I, I went to, like in this case, I went to buyers. Okay. And I need neighborhood snaps. Okay. And then you decide, in this case, if you click all, you see them all. But if you just okay. want door hangers, <coughs> you can just filter by door hangers. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then you click use and it will take you to the process of editing them, changing the add stuff, etc. logos. And you can add elements, you see, for those who use Canva, this is quite similar to Canva, but is not doesn't have the same quality yet of designs and yeah. Jennifer, did you have a question? I was just wondering for like the print stuff, can that also uh, connect directly to a printer that we'd use, or I guess we'd have to download the printed file to send to our printer of choice? Yeah, so right now you have to download it. Okay. And then yeah. you can send it. And there's uh, there's some, uh, I know that uh, some postcards, now Command mm -hmm. has, um, they have the, a printer that is connected. Oh. You can send it directly okay. from here, but I haven't used it yet. Darren, do you know about that? Have you used it? Um, I've seen it, but I have not used it myself mm -hmm. either. Most of the stuff I download myself and then I'll print mm -hmm. separately in a way. Me yeah. too. What I what I would do actually, what I will do, I would just connect with the chat, the support, and say, hey, how do I send this directly to the? Oh yeah, yeah, that like, would be better. Yeah. Ask yeah. ask question, and then mm -hmm. when you print, remember always choose PDF. This is true mm -hmm. in all situations. The yeah. PDF is the one that doesn't change. Uh, if you use a JPEG or a or TIFF, TIFF or or um, PNG, sometimes you get like uh, the ratio changes when you uh, send it, the PDF doesn't change. So, and it has the highest definition. So if you wanna print, most printers will request the PDF. Questions, comments? Is anybody using already designs? Has anybody tried it? Yes, Kelvin? Christina? Yes, we have started using it. Um, we're doing a listing presentation in Spanish. Oh, that's a great use of it. I absolutely love it. So here you have a listing presentation. So you can use this as templates to do listing presentation or pre-listing packages. And then you can use it and edit it and change it and translate it in other languages as well. So this is a great use of command. Yeah. Anybody else? I found, um, I mean, I'm a new agent. So you probably all got the agent store. I thought that, I know that's different than this that you're showing, but I thought that was also helpful for starting out with some marketing, just some basics. I don't know if you've used that before, because they had Keller Williams. Like, uh, yeah, it was the the agent store, and you can in the Keller Williams is you can select them, and then it will have all the logos and stuff and templates that you can follow, and it goes direct to print. I don't know if you've tried that. Oh, okay. so that's a, that's the one we were talking about. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So where where did you go? Tell us. I think it was just called the agent store. I think that's even the website. And it was um, part of my new agent package that they sent me some oh, okay. promotions. Um, and the pricing wasn't too bad either. So mm -hmm. let me okay. see if I can find you the, the link actually. Yeah, if you, if you don't mind to share yeah. it. Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't have as many options as we have on here, which is awesome. That's it, right there, agent store. Yeah, that's it. The you agent. Yeah. So okay. I, I ordered my first business cards from them and, and even a name tag. So yeah, yeah this is great. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, that's the same one. Okay, I'm gonna share this in the chat. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it up. Of course. Jennifer, how much you cost? 
Um, it's twenty dollars. I don't know if that's a promotional rate for just some basic, like a hundred cards. I ended up getting like the upgraded one with the larger count, so um, I ended up spending almost a hundred. Because okay. I also bought the name tag too. the The name tag was twenty dollars, and there's oh. like ten dollars for shipping, something like that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And here, look, actually, this is very useful. You see, for custom design. So Keller Williams has partnerships with many vendors. And so they give us uh, discounts, uh, great prices. And so this um, uh, brand co, it helps you for small businesses. It helps you branding. It helps you with your branding. It helps you uh, like uh, create, even create your initial custom website. Although you can do that in command for free. So this is for those who want to go like maybe one step up, but command has the, the option <coughs> of designing your own website and uh, um, where you create your own branding. So anything else about this part? Darren, shall we move on to the campaigns? Sure, do you want to take a five minute break first? Okay. Why don't we take another five minute break and then come back at 11.05 uh, and, and then we'll talk about campaigns. Sounds good.
Okay, we have one more minute. All right, we're back. How's everybody doing so far? Everybody good? Thumbs up? Amazing. Are you finding this helpful? I'm finding this very, very helpful. Thank you very much. Good, good, excellent. And like I said, this is just for you to, like I said, whet your appetite because it's not, uh, um, there's, there's a lot of trainings about these and your market center will have also specific training. And uh, there's another Facebook group that is called the, the 66 day challenge. And I found that that's how I learned to use this actually. Um, yeah, there's the one uh, action to learn, one thing to learn every day for 66 days, because they say it takes 66 days to form a new habit. And, uh, and they, they delve into each item of these. So there's a lot of videos, there's a YouTube channel. So I recommend that you join that as well to find more resources. Yeah, it's okay, a very helpful resource. Yeah, it's very helpful. The, the videos are short, they're two to three minutes. That so makes it very quick and easy. Uh, you can also find it on the Keller Williams New England YouTube channel. There's a link on there as well for it. Yeah. So campaigns. You might okay. put in the chat what you just say. How to find it? The 66 day challenge. If you go to the Keller Williams New England YouTube channel, you'll find it on there. There's a link on there too. It's the guy's name is Marty Miller. Um, and what he has done is he's actually put together the 66 videos that uh, Serena was talking about. Okay, I was looking for the for the Thank link you. I'll look for that later. I'll put it in the chat. So I'll actually I'll find I'll put it in there. So thank you. Yeah. So campaigns. Now campaigns are necessary if you want to market online. <laughs> And if you want to leverage social media, which is a, real, a cheap way to <coughs> earn, excuse me. Bless you. Thank you. Sorry about that. To get more leads. Now, you are, if you go into command, then this one with the megaphone, that's campaigns. So that's how you get there. And like I said, please, if you can, just mimic me right now and, and do it yourself because when you do, you learn much more than if you just watch. So you go on campaign. This is the dashboard. I like this quick post. Look at that, them. They are great. They even have, have the little emojis here. So you can simply click on that and it will already take you to create a campaign. So they make it very, very easy for you <coughs> to do this. So you see, I just clicked on share and it took me directly, shortcut, shortcut me directly to that. And then look at this, tips and training. This is all, Check all the articles from the KW University. There is so much. I can tell you, I mean, you could read. So what I did, and this is another um, productivity tip. 
I saved and I still do it to this day. Every day I have one hour and sometimes it's two hours every other day for my education. And so I always had that time. I woke up early, so it's the first two hours of the day. I learn how to do something new every single day. Or I learn, I study something about the market or about real estate in general or about septic systems, tax pools. I had no idea what the sex pool was. And so I went and I researched it. So I recommend that you guys block the time on your calendar and learn and focus on command till you master it. Because there's so much here that you can use that, that can really propel your business to the next level. So create a campaign. Very easy, very intuitive, the green button. And then you can do email, direct mail, social post, or paid ads. <laughs> so today I'm going to show you the social ad. You enter a campaign name, we'll call it test, and then you decide what is your goal. So let's say in this case is attract listing. So you select it. In truth, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you, you do, it just, uh, it just, helps you with different tags and different things but they are they're all good and then you decide where to run the campaign so you can only do facebook if you add instagram that's important because it will change the format so always know before you start anything especially with marketing have clear objective in mind who is your target where do i want to reach them where, where do where are they so what is the platform uh, where I can reach them? Like in my case, in Instagram, I, I don't really do Instagram much. So for me, my people are on Facebook mostly. My other, my bias agent is all Instagram. And so when we do things mostly for him, we select Instagram only. Then you... It's very intuitive. And look at this. Look what they added. They added a step-by-step -step guide with Gary Keller's face. I find that hilarious. <laughs> they didn't put the little picture of Gary Keller up there. And he tells you exactly what to do. Add the headline. You're right here. And they give you also suggestions. Thinking of selling, not sure if now it's the right time. Because remember, you selected attract listing. If you selected attract buyers, he would say something thinking of buyers, is et cetera, et cetera. So that's for the suggestion that, um, that they will give you. Then you enter the headline, of course, the one with the red asterisk are mandatory fields. And so you say the headline, so attract listing, now is the time to sell like that. And then you write the description. So the description, this is the main copy, and this is important. They recommend that you add some emojis because it spries it up, it makes it nice, attracts, it's more of a thumb stopper because like somebody said it before, the attention span of people is very, is very short and it's getting actually shorter than the attention span of a goldfish. <laughs> it's becoming less than 12 seconds. So people, people scroll and you have to find something that is a thumb stopper. Sometimes it's a catchy headline, for example, or sometimes it is a, some image. The Im images, pictures are the most important thing when you do an ad. And uh, <clears throat> also um, some people like to do the clickbait style. I do not recommend to do that because remember, the most important thing for an agent to be successful is to be authentic. So always advertise honestly and present yourself for who you are and, and, and what, you, what you offer. Don't try to trick people into working with you because it never works. So you write whatever you, you write. And then of course, <clears throat> you add the picture. We're not gonna add the picture because, because of time. Um, it takes it takes a while to upload, but there will be a picture here. You would see the um, the preview right here. And since we also said it's going to be on Instagram, 
they will show you how the preview will look for Facebook and Instagram. <clears throat> then you go to media and you select, is it an image or is it a video? You can also upload a video. So let's say you make a video with another tool that you have. <clears throat> I personally use iMovie because I'm a Mac user, but now we use something called Movavi uh, with the V, V, A, V, I that helps uh, uh, like edit videos really, really easily. But you can use the, the native app on your phone, anything else, and then you upload it here. <clears throat> and then you get the DBA logo. And look at this, Market Center logos. It takes you to the page. Somebody, somebody had asked this. Let me put it in the chat because this is very useful in my opinion. So this is where you were to find the KW identity and style guide. And then when you go here, you type in your market center. So mine is Cape Cod and the island. And I can download the logo, you see, it's right here and you can download it directly. Or you can ask your market center tech person to give it to you. And you decide where to put it. You want it on the left side or you want it on the right side. And then of course you save, you have to select. I'm not gonna do that because it, it takes too much time. And then Facebook and Instagram settings. This is important. So first of all, the page, do you have one or more um, business pages? You, uh, oh, and you have to have a, a business page to run this. You cannot run ads through your personal profile. So the first step for all of you should be to create a business page. In Instagram, you can have a personal profile, but if you want somebody else to manage it for you, which you probably will get to the point to, it has to be a business one. So you can add content editors there as well. And then button. So you, they recommend to select Facebook lead generation form. But if you have another landing page, something like on your website or something else that you wanna use, another lead capture form, you can, you can add the URL that you want. Now the audience, you can use <clears throat> custom settings. So that is something that most people do and they can add, um, target a custom audience and you can add, if you want, interests. So let's say, let's say here, I want to see, I, I'm looking for golf, but I wonder if they added golf to this. Because to me, it makes sense if you are on the golf, oh, get a community. Okay, this is, this is important. So this, uh, uh, you can add this one, this interest, get it community. So anybody who <clears throat> has shown interest online, uh, in a gated community will receive the ad in front of them. It's, it's a form of micro-targeting. And then this one, database targeting. This is incredible. This is an incredible tool. If you select database targeting, you can create an audience, upload a custom list from your um, database, and they will be able to um, put the ad in front of them. So this is a great way for you to stay in touch with your database without them knowing. And they will say, hey, I see you everywhere on Facebook. And you're like, well, not really. It's because I'm targeting you, but don't say that. Okay, and then lead settings. This is another very um, time-saving tool to use. And this, this is new because uh, the main reason why I didn't like to do run campaigns was that then you have to, you have to see when a lead arrived from here, you see the little bell 
<laughs> or the app on your phone, there's a, a little red dot that says lead arrived. And then you have to go in and tag it. So it could be added to a campaign. They made this automatic. So let's say I'm running this campaign, 190 Blue Rock, and then I'm going to have a plan that could be, I don't know, oh, here. So let's say I choose 215 Cambridge, that's the campaign. And then I add it to the smart plan that is called Cambridge follow up. And so all these leads that are captured automatically get added to the smart plan. And the smart plan will start texting them. You have to connect with Twilio and pay per text that you send, but it's not much to send text. And we'll send also automatic emails and we'll assign tasks to you to call them. So when you go into your dashboard in the morning, that's something you should do every morning, you will see all the tasks that you have here. You see tasks and it will tell you, you have to call one, two, three, and four because they're part, they are leads that you just captured. And then lastly, duration and budget. You decide for how long you want to run it. Like I say, for the open houses, I do it from Tuesday through Sunday, if I do open house Saturday and Sunday. If it, sometimes I run a campaign like for brand awareness, sometimes I run them for two weeks, you know, if I want to <coughs> reach more, if I have a higher budget. And then you decide how much you want to add. I usually do $100, but it could be more, it's up to you. In this case, I do, it's both Instagram and Facebook. So I will do two, $200. $10 per day per channel for 10 days. And then you save it. I say either distribute evenly or you can use the automatic placement. This, these are details. Honestly, it doesn't matter. So all these details, it, 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 the campaign will work no matter what. And then <clears throat> I'm going to leave this page and uh, I want to show you this. So these are some of the campaigns that we run. And when you go here, that this one was three days only, right? And we spent $100 for three days. We had 5,257 impressions. This is a lot, guys. That means that just with $100, you put your name, your brand, and your open house in front of over 5,000 people. When you can say that to your client, they, they are impressed. I have another company, 8,000, 28,000 impressions, 4,000, 8,000, look at this. And so, so, some of them have more, some of them have less. I honestly, I have no idea why, <laughs> no idea what happened there with the algorithm, but it, it's a good thing. And then this is the number of clicks that you get. And this is the number of leads. Look at this. So each lead is costing you $1.56. If you can get 64 leads with $100, isn't that worth it to take the time to learn it and use it? And, and then if you don't have your own listings, you do either a brand awareness campaign or you ask somebody from your market center to promote their listings. So this, this is a great tool. And then when you click <clears throat> here on the leads, it takes you to all the leads here and you see with the tags and then you can call them and do everything else you know that you have to do this is an amazing tool and what we do we have a 10 days of pain and then we add to the, a neighborhood which is the neighborhood where the house that they were looking for is located Sometimes we have multiple neighborhoods and we put it, we put the lead on a long-term campaign. So <clears throat> questions about campaigns. I think you're all a bit dazed. <laughs> I hope I didn't. 
I didn't share too much or too fast. But any body questions? What I would suggest is that everybody go in and play around with it as much as you can. Get used to using it, dive into it, um, try different things out, see what works. Um, ask some of the people in your office as well, too, if they're using it and what they're doing for, uh, for success as well. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay, so this class comes with homework. So now you have it fresh. And I believe we have a few more things to, to talk about, but I think we can, we can end a little bit earlier, but I would like you to take the time and play with it today, now that it's still fresh in your mind and, and do at least a design, a Facebook ad, anything just to, to, to get more familiar with it and, and, and crystallize it in your brain because this is, this is an incredible tool that has been put to at our, to our disposal by Keller Williams, and uh, I recommend that we all use it. And then just to, to, to finish this uh, conversation about marketing. So the first thing is understand who you are and who you want to be, how you want to be perceived, be authentic. Understand who your target audience is. This is extremely important because it could be everybody. In, in truth, it is everybody. But if you are a woke millennial, maybe that's your target because you speak the same language and you have, you know, um, you prefer to use, I don't know, Instagram and TikTok instead of Facebook. When I say I have a 24 year old son, when I say, when I say Facebook, even I have two younger son, uh, son and daughter too. When I say Facebook, they roll their eyes at me. They're like, Facebook? Nobody's on Facebook, mom. I'm like, all my friends are on Facebook. Most of my demographic is on Facebook. So I'm just going to stick with it. And also stick to what is you are comfortable with. So that's the other important thing. Like, you're not going to see me on TikTok. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure many of you were like, oh, let's follow Serena on TikTok. No, it's not going to happen. Darren, are you on TikTok? No, I'm about the same. Um, my 18-year-old uh, daughter tried to, tries to get me on there. That, that's just not happening. But, you know, yeah, stick to where your audience is. You know, we talked about before about identifying your niche, about identifying your client, the ideal client you want to work with. Where are they? And just use that medium to get there. Designs, campaigns, they have pretty much templates for everything that's out there. So there's really no place that you can go wrong. Hey, Darren, can I, can I comment on that real quick? Sure. So uh, we have a lending agent who had a teenage daughter and she insisted that he go on TikTok and all he did was a silly dance and he's gotten over 20,000 views. So Great. might want to give it a second thought. Well, that gives you incentive right there. That's good too. Absolutely. You know? Okay. You know what, Sean? You convinced me. You're going to see me dance on TikTok. I'm going to do it. If I can get 22,000 22, people to become potential clients, I'll do that out of my comfort zone. And then another important thing that we don't talk much about in, in these classes, but Google My Business. Google My Business is huge. So um, not right away. I would wait till you get a little bit more, you know, for those who are new, of course. Um, more experienced, but then consider creating a Google My Business account and use it, post on it, get reviews. Reviews are huge. We're doing a, a, a reaching out to all our past customers. We, we started Google My Business a couple of months ago. Now we got 36 reviews and I'm starting to get leads from it just, just because of that. And then YouTube is the other thing because YouTube is owned by Google. So the more you use the Google um, platforms and Google services, the more you will come up in searches. And you wanna be on the first page because there, guys, there's so many agents. So on Cape Cod where I live, 
the what is it like 400 square miles there's 2700 agents there's one agent for half a square mile that's a lot of agents so how do you you know rise to the top that's what you have to do you have to make yourself competitive online I Great think that's what I got. so what are we hearing what are some takeaways from here some ahas that people are uh are have taken away from today use the system because the system has been designed for us to you know reach a lot of people at once yeah, absolutely you have plenty of tools at your disposal command really sets you up for essentially handling marketing you know like no other system that's out there with our partnership with facebook you know you can feed your database after you've built that wall around the existing folks it's good i really enjoy this class because it took me to where I needed to go. I just wish we had more time in more days to just focus on the command because it is really helpful. Thank you. The videos on the Killer Williams New England page, um, you'll have Marty Miller and he will give you the 66 day challenge like Serena had talked about. There's also videos that are on there too that uh, Brooke, our regional tech trainer uh, has put together as well. And that'll give you a little bit more information. You'll expand upon some of the things that were here. And every Thursday at one o'clock, she does a command class going over a specific area, specific topic within command. So look for those. The recordings are usually on the YouTube channel. Um, but if you're looking for more in-depth uh, information on any of these things that we touched on today, that's a great resource. Now, has everybody been doing there? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Christine. No worries. Um, I still had a little bit of trouble connecting the Instagram on command. I wasn't sure if it was like integrated along with Facebook, but I didn't see it. Yeah. Did you actually go under uh, settings and uh, go down to the different applications and look to connect that? Yes. Um, okay. It was like... Um, it goes into like KW Marketplace, but then. Yeah. Okay, you know what I would do is I would actually touch base with your market center tech trainer and see if there's a way that you can actually work to get that connected. So you may not actually have the right link for that for your Instagram page, and they could probably help you out with that. Okay, thank you. Sure, absolutely. Is everybody uh, doing their 10-4? Has everybody been doing that on a weekly basis? Everybody know what I'm talking about when I say the 10-4? Okay. How many people have had some uh, some luck with that? We're talking about the 10 contacts that are added each week, 10 conversations a day, right? 10 handwritten notes and 10 home previews per week. Anybody able to hit those on a weekly basis? And I would like to add to that 10 new social media contacts a week at least whatever your platform is but keep adding keep interacting and messaging messaging privately is also another great tool just remember the best thing that you can do with everything that you're learning here over the course of the month of september is to actually go out and utilize it. all right take action all right the biggest thing that you can do with this is take action any action whatsoever so when they list the 10-4 you know, the list that they have there and the different, uh, the four items and 10 uh, steps in each one, utilize that, take advantage of it. Even if you do a couple of them, what it's going to do is it's going to get you in the rhythm of lead generating and getting your name out there and getting into habits that are going to lead to appointments and the appointments are going to lead to closings. Because right now, that's what we're looking for. So we're right in the process right now of training and lead generating. That's the most important thing that we're going through. But the training eventually is going to subside and it's up to you to take the actions and to go out there and to really build your business, right? A lot of people get the impression that if they just sit there, the phone is magically going to ring and the emails are magically going to come in and the posts are magically going to come in saying like, hey, you know, I want you to list my $2 million house. That's HGTV. That's not how the real, real world works. So we need to go out and actually let people know that we are in business, that we're here to help them, that we're a great resource and that we have value to offer, okay? 
And that's what we want to do. Taking action is the most important thing and it's consistent action. Doing that is the most important thing that you can do right now. Serena, anything else that you wanted to add to that? Well, I would love to hear more from those, especially those who have not spoken. If you could, uh, I don't know if I mentioned that, if you could turn on your cameras and uh, and just, just tell us something. Because also that helps us kind of understand if we need to, you know, teach something differently or, you know, help you a different way. So any more ahas or anything that we have not covered that, that is still a pressing question for you? Anything at all? Hi, this is Danielle. Um, I think the aha moment for me is the importance of branding um, and, uh, you know, doing that right off, right at the get-go when you're starting. Um, for me, I'm new to this particular agency, but uh, the marketing piece I think is very important and that's what I want to focus on um, and get that right up and running. That, that's my aha. I've got to get the marketing piece um, right out of the get-go so that I'm prepared when I go out into the world and interact with people as well. So I think marketing is very important. I love it. It is. And branding. Branding is very important also because, you know, we were talking about value proposition at the beginning. That's something that can easily set you apart because I see that many individual agents, I see good branding at the high level, like teams and people that are like can hire or like a, a marketing company. But at the solo agent level, especially initially in, in the initial phase in their career, I don't see much of that. So if you can make yourself set, um, stand out from your competition through a consistent, coherent, like beautiful branding, and then be out there as much as you can. Social media, enough. That and Google, Google My Business, of course, that is enough. You don't have to do much more. I'll tell you that <clears throat> from the my Second, no, for my first year actually in real estate, after like six or eight months, I became number two on Yelp in my town. And uh, um, I started getting calls actually from people that found me online from the very beginning. And I was like, where did you find me? And I was like, oh, I went on Yelp. I, I Googled top agents and your name was there. And honestly, I'll tell you, I was surprised. I was like, I'm not, I'm not a top agent, <laughs> you know. But it's because I started, I, I started from the very beginning thinking about branding and marketing and 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 consistent presence across all platforms. So it could really, you know, make a difference in your career. So we put our names and contact information in the chat. So. Feel free to save it and reach out if you, you know, have more questions, if you need anything, if you have clients to send our way, of course. And, uh, and I would love, you know, to take the opportunity. Every time I teach a class, I always ask people, like, if you can connect with me on social media, that would be great. LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, um, like I said, let's continue a conversation. Let, let, let's keep this relationship going because you never know, first of all, when you, when, where your next client can come from. And from partnerships, there's so much that can come out of relationships that you nurture so that every opportunity you have also to make connection with other agents, you want to take it. That's my two cents on networking. Yeah, just one thing that I'll add to that, too, is take a look at the script books for Spark and Elemental that you get with the class here as well, too. All right. Um, become familiar with what's in there. We don't have to memorize them and sound like we're scripted, but get an understanding of what they're trying to say. Um, we actually have script practice every single day in our market center at 815 and 915, uh, where we actually have senior agents that role play. And then we have new agents and we break down what 
it is, and it involves expireds and for sale by owners listing objections, but get familiar with the language of real estate. That's going to be your number one tool to have conversations. And it doesn't matter if you're at a barbecue on the weekend or if you run into somebody in line at the grocery store, those scripts will help to build your confidence and allow you to go out and have these conversations with folks. So if you're nervous about getting a call from somebody when you put in, uh, an ad or a post out there and what to say, those script books tell you exactly what it is. So read those and then make them your own. Make it sound like it's coming genuinely from you and you're gonna have a better handle on this business and you're gonna be able to really hold your own when it comes to having conversations with anyone. And somebody, Lute just wrote, how much does it cost to advertise on Yelp? Guys, too much. Don't honestly, there's so much that can be done without spending any money or just spending hundred dollars that I, I, I tried, I learned the hard way. I was like, oh, let's get the easy way. Let's buy leads on, I never bought leads, leads on Zillow, but some people do. I have a lot of people, I know a lot of people that do that. Or let's buy advertising on Yelp. That was like $500 a month. And in the end, you know, it didn't really make much of a difference because I don't know if it's the same for you, but when I see the first names and it says sponsored, I don't, I don't click on that because if somebody has to pay to be there, to me, it's like, I kind of want to see what the organic uh, ranking is. I want to see the reviews. This is another very important piece of information. Start getting reviews, create a system to get reviews from the get go. And uh, on, uh, on Yelp, it doesn't have to be a client. It could be somebody that you work with could be could be your a lender could be a, I don't know it could be a relative I mean anybody who can say positive things about you because people go and look I have this glowing review on Yelp from one of my first customers and the people call me they say I read what that woman said about you I I had no doubts that you were the person that I want to work with so um, do it organically no need to pay and if you have to pay for something, pay for Facebook ads through command. I think it's how you do that on Facebook, even on the business page or person, how you do for the people to do the, the put the, their reviews. Because of friends will help to do that, you know, me from all my life, you know what I mean? So how I do that, I, I don't know how to do it. How do you ask for reviews? Yeah, how, how you do that, that set up? So there's uh, on Facebook, like when you create a Facebook page, people can go there and literally click, leave a review. And so that, that becomes very easy. And then uh, the way I do, I send a link to people. And I say, hey, I would appreciate if you could leave me a review. Of course, I call them first. And then I send the direct link. So I make it easy for them. There's uh, some um, services. One is called Rate My Agent. And another one is called Real Satisfied. Some MLSs offer, like in Massachusetts, they offer it for free. It's uh, the basic uh, subscription is free. And, uh, and they have a system there where they send uh, you just, I have to add the, the email address of your client, past client, and they send this email and they say, give us, give us a review. And then with the rate, my agent, it gets automatically syndicated to Google my business and to, um, to two of them. I, I believe it's Facebook, but they have to click, of course, copy and paste, and then it gets put there. And then they share it on your social media automatically. So that's a system that some people use, but otherwise just get the link. Like if you create a, a Yelp account, like a, as a business, be careful because if they put a negative review, it's there forever. You know, there's, you can reply, but they don't take it. They don't take it down. But, and then, it, then there's the link where it says, click to send, uh, to get reviews. Realtor.com also, that's another place that there's a place where you can click get the link and then send it to people and say, hey, can you put a review here for me? When you build your website in command too, there's actually little modules that you can put in there 
where people can go in and write a review and you can actually have recent reviews show up in there. One of the things you may want to do too is as you're working with somebody say like, look, I'm here to provide you with a five-star service. So hopefully by the end, everything goes well. And if you are satisfied and you're very happy with what the service is that I've given you, I would love it if you could actually write me a review or give me a referral or something like that. And then what that does is that keeps it in their mind, at least in the beginning. And obviously, as you live up to that, you know, promise that you gave them, then they'll be more apt to write your review and or give you a referral and maybe even both. Thank you. Okay, great. There you go. Serena, I think you're on mute. Sorry, guys. I wanna I was I was showing you what I did on my website. I just put the reviews here and I create this. I got this idea from Tony Baroni, who some he does it at a very, very high level. He's another Keller Williams agent. And so these are the four platforms. As you can see, I removed Zillow I, because I used to gather reviews on Zillow too, but since I became a brokerage, I stopped. Some people still prefer to do it. And then if you click on write review, it's linked directly to the Google, to the write review form on Google My Business. So I make it easy. And then this one is rate my agent that I was telling you. And this is a widget that they allow you to add to the website. So instead, some people just write, copy and paste the reviews and you will see three modules with, I mean, one module with three reviews, the scroll. I decided to do this. So, so this way um, they keep coming up. So I don't have to, to manage it. It's done automatically. Well, I apologize, everybody. I actually have to run to another meeting, but if anybody has any follow-up questions or looking for information or looking to jump in on any of the role play calls and things that we do, just reach out to me, let me know, call, text, email me, I'd be happy to help out. So yeah, Thank same you. here. And I don't think is there anything else that we have to cover there? I think we're done. I think we can yeah. unless uh, there's any questions that I'm happy to field, we can call you today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, and everybody. Appreciate it. Good luck with everything, guys. And reach out if you need us. Bye. Bye, Darren. Thank Bye -bye, you. Bye, Serena. Great working with you. Thank you. Great. Great teaching with you. I enjoyed it. Bye. Absolutely. Take care.